Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and you just heard solo number four from the Mitchell Peters book, Advanced Studies for Snare Drum. That's the blue book. So I've been doing all these solos over the past couple of weeks. I've been posting them, and I'm going to eventually do all of them. This is a really difficult solo. It's, it's one of the more difficult ones in the book, not because of anything in particular. In other words, there's no passages that are impossible to play. It's just the way it's written is confusing if you're not used to reading a lot of 30 second notes. And there are a few difficult technical passages with flams and drags, as you saw there. So let's talk about those first. So he has uh, some of these flam drag uh, things that happen consecutively. Uh, line three of the first page is the first time you see that. And then it happens uh, a few other times in triplets like this. And finally, the last bar of the piece like this. So those are difficult. And when I'm working with my students on these, that's the first thing I start with. So whatever tempo they can do that last bar at comfortably, that's their tempo for a while until they can get it better. So the best way to work on that is just go slowly like this. Start with flams like this. You see that seesaw motion. Then just substitute a drag for the first one. So I have them make up little exercises like that and, and doing it a lot really, really helps. And I do play my drags pretty close, but I play my flams a little open to avoid flat flams, which are really easy to do by accident when you're playing these kinds of passages. The next issue, like I said earlier, is this A2 is written with a lot of 30 second notes and you need to get that pulse in your head. So one thing I have my students do is put on that 30 second note pulse and play with it. Which is tricky to do. Um, you know, you need to be able to hear the metronome, so you might wear headphones like I'm doing or use a pad. But just playing those 30 second notes, getting them even, and try not to favor your strong hand like this. It needs to be like this. And you see there, I'm just releasing the stick just for a second from my fingers. I'm not doing. I feel that's kind of a choke sound. I like this. Now in line four, you have the first of these mixed passages that sound like this. So there, you're going to want to lead with your strong hand like this slowly. You're going to try to emphasize the weekend so it's even. In other words, you don't want to sound like this. It needs to sound like this. Now, in this case, the dynamic is piano. So. So in this in that case, you want to not let go of the stick, like I said earlier, but just keep your fingers on the stick, both hands. So. It's very, very important to do that. So you have control. So practice it loud, practice it soft, all dynamics. Now, the roles in this piece are pretty interesting because unlike the previous three etudes, we have lots of mixed types of underlying rhythms happening in this. So for the long rolls, the quarter note and half note rolls, I'm doing a, 30, uh, um, a 16th note triplet pulse under that like this. So that pulse is, is perfect for this tempo. It's really relaxed and just buzz all of those notes. But 
for the shorter passages, the shorter rolls, I'm using a left to right sticking. A good example of that is the top of the second page. You see that there's kind of a triplet roll. And what you're going to do is start with your left and then with your right. So that sounds like this. And I start my row just a little early. I think it adds a little style to that section. I like it. Now that section, in other words, those two bars, the last bar of page one into the first bar of page two is, is difficult also for a lot of people because all of a sudden you're in this triplet feel. So what I do is I like to start subdividing on uh, the first bar of line eight uh, on the first page. So let me play line eight into the second page for you. One, two, three, four. So lots of different rhythmic groupings. So you have to start subdividing your head that triplet. It's almost like going into a 6-8 or 12-8 feel there. Triplet, triplet. So your, your body clock is doing that for those two bars, and you snap right back to that 16th note feel there. There is one more thing that I want to talk about, and that's marcato accents. I was just glancing and I saw a few. Those are the rooftop accents. I know a lot of you know about this, but I might just go over it just in case. Those accents are pretty much the heaviest accents you're going to play on a drum. So I always play those right in the center of the snare drum. Normally my playing position when I'm playing forte is right off of center. Okay, but for these, it's dead center, which is the tightest part of that drum. So it gives you a real shot as opposed to just off-center. I'm sure you can hear that. So if you look at line seven, let me show you what that should sound like. One, two, three, four. So you see there, instead of just going crescendoing up, and hitting uh, an accent or a slight accent, I'm really bringing that two dynamic levels above what I would normally play there. So that's important that you, you play those. And throughout this piece, there's a, a few of those that appear. All right. And uh, one more thing. <laughs> I keep seeing these things. Line eight of the second page. That should all be played with one hand. <laughs> Pretty obvious, but don't try to alternate that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time with number five. Thanks.